This aircraft carrier was stolen from Ukraine and then ruined by the Russian Navy. But how Russia managed to use up most of the carrier's service life without the ship even leaving the dock is not what you think. During her design phase, the newest Soviet heavy aircraft carrier was called Soviet Union. In 1982, when she was laid down in Soviet Ukraine, she was named Riga. Then, when launched in 1985, she was renamed to Leonid Brezhnev. And when she underwent sea trials in 1989, she was known as Tbilisi. When Tbilisi was about to enter service, the Soviet Navy was not ready to run such a ship. There were no air groups, no task forces of which Tbilisi would be, and no air traffic control groups without which Tbilisi couldn't function. But worst of all, there was no infrastructure to support such a ship. And spoiler alert, such an infrastructure still doesn't exist. Even the carrier's first commanding officer, Captain Viktor Yarigen, told a Soviet newspaper that the Soviet Navy was not prepared for the appearance of a ship like Tbilisi. You see, during the Soviet times, most funding was allocated to the ship development and manufacturing and not enough money was left over for routine upkeep of the existing ships. As the Soviet Union was enduring its final days, the Soviet Navy did not want their capital ships to be named after cities that had open opposition to the Soviet Union. They wanted Tbilisi and her sister ship Riga renamed. The government came in and on September 19, 1990, it was announced that Tbilisi was renamed to Admiral of the Fleet of the Soviet Union Kuznetsov, and the under construction sister ship was renamed to Varyag. And this was kind of a big deal, especially if you're already familiar with the Marine Superstition List. Bringing bananas on the ship is bad luck. If you see a redhead before boarding a ship, it's very bad luck. And changing the name of a ship is very, very bad luck. Now, I don't believe in superstitions, but I do believe in diversification. I mean, who wouldn't want to own a piece of Van Gogh? And I'm not talking about his ear, I'm talking about his art. Contemporary art has historically had an insane performance, outpacing S&P 500 by 164% for the last 26 years straight. And now you and I can also own a piece of fine art from Picasso or Van Gogh in an affordable way, thanks to Masterworks, who's sponsoring today's video. Masterworks is a disruptive investment platform that leverages technology and industry expertise and enables you to invest in the same kind of art billionaires collect, but for a fraction of what they pay. Because at Masterworks, you can invest in just a portion of these paintings. The art market has been tactically used as an instrument to protect wealth and defend against inflation for generations. With Masterworks, you can have control over how much you invest while you're still part of the $1.7 trillion art market. I think it's a genius way to further diversify your investments, especially given today's volatile markets and raging inflation. As not what you think viewers, you can get priority access and skip Masterworks waitlist. Just click the link in the description. You too can own a piece of fine art. Admiral Kuznetsov is truly a misfortunate ship whose adventures began when Russia secretly plotted to steal her from the newly independent Ukraine. The carrier's misfortune started with the downfall of the Soviet Union. On August 24, 1991, Ukraine declared independence from the USSR. Immediately, tensions with Russia began on what to do with the Black Sea Fleet, since the majority of officers were pro-Russia. The Ukrainian president, Leonid Kravchuk, proclaimed that Admiral Kuznetsov is Ukrainian property and ordered the commander of the ship to remain docked in Ukraine. But the commander, Viktor Yarigen, disagreed. In his eyes, Ukraine did not exist as a country yet, because the independence referendum had not been held yet. So on December 1st, 1991, the very same day that 92% of Ukrainians were busy voting for independence during the referendum, aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov left the Black Sea under the orders from the Russian Northern Fleet and headed to Marmansk. One third of the ship's crew remained on the carrier, with the rest staying behind in Ukraine. With construction still incomplete, Admiral Kuznetsov traveled thousands of kilometers away from the shipbuilder, 
and ended up in a port that lacked proper infrastructure to house such a capital ship. But despite being unfinished, on January 20th, 1991, Kuznetsov was commissioned as the flagship of the Russian Navy, but it didn't receive any aircraft for two years and wasn't even fully operational for another three years. The carrier's first deployment began in 1995 in the Mediterranean Sea, which lasted about three months. Her mission was to show off Russia's new flagship and practice sorties during favorable Mediterranean weather conditions. The carrier's main role was status projection rather than power projection, as Admiral Kuznetsov was retained and sustained for Russia's appearance of being a major naval power. After all, an aircraft carrier with fixed-wing aircraft is a type of capital ship that very few countries possess. But Kuznetsov is more of a Potemkin village, which if you're unfamiliar with, is a construction whose purpose is to provide an external facade to a country that's doing poorly, to make it look like they're doing better than they really are. Kind of like Instagram, but for countries. This carrier is not the front piece of a modern fleet, Rather, behind Kuznetsov is a Russian navy trying desperately to maintain the resemblance of the once large, impressive, and far-ranging Soviet navy. While on the outside Kuznetsov might look mighty, during its first deployment, 2,000 embarked men were rationing water, which was only available for 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes in the morning, and 10 minutes in the evening, because the ship's evaporators, which distill seawater, broke down. At one point, the US Navy was poised to help the Russian flagship by providing fresh water. But it gets worse. Admiral Kuznetsov's propulsion system consists of eight pressurized boilers, which are extremely unreliable. As a result, on multiple occasions, including her first deployment, the carrier lost all propulsion and was dead at sea. Even though the propulsion system could frequently be repaired at sea, on occasion, Kuznetsov had to be towed back to port. For this reason, during the 2016 Syrian campaign, the flagship of the Russian Navy had to be accompanied by a tugboat, Nikolai Chikar, which in hindsight was a good idea, because yet again, Kuznetsov lost propulsion, and with the help of this mighty tugboat, she was towed back to port during a not-so-fair weather, Potemkin village. According to Western sources, Russia ended up procuring more carrier-based airplanes that it managed to train qualified pilots for, which is kind of ironic, as the opposite charade happened during the first deployment of the Soviet aircraft carrier Kiev in the 1970s. By the time the first Soviet aircraft carrier was ready for its first deployment, only six Yak-38 aircraft had been produced and embarked on the ship. So in order to make Kiev look more mighty than she really was in front of American intelligence services, Soviets engaged in an elaborate deception. Sailors repainted the airframe numbers on the aircraft after each sortie in order to inflate the number of Yak-38 aircraft that was supposedly stored inside the carrier's hangars. And you gotta give it to them, because their deception worked. American media later reported that the Kyiv aircraft carrier had embarked at least 60 aircraft, while in reality, it was just six. We should clarify that Kuznetsov is not an aircraft carrier. At least, legally speaking, she does not identify as an aircraft carrier. Otherwise, she'd be stuck in the Black Sea. That's because according to the Montreux Convention, the passage of aircraft carriers heavier than 15,000 tons are prohibited through the Turkish Straits. The easy workaround was for the Soviets to designate Kuznetsov and all their other aircraft carriers as heavy aircraft carrying cruisers. During three decades of service in the Russian Navy, Kuznetsov only made six short deployments to the Mediterranean and Atlantic. She spent most of her service time docked, in Murmansk or in shipyards for repair. Her average seagoing time was around 15 days per year, and she only saw one combat deployment in Syria in 2016. Arguably, the most memorable event from the Syrian deployment was the black smoke. The black exhaust was attributed to many different causes, such as the use of low-quality fuel, operator error for not preheating fuel, and so on. But it's becoming evident that the likely cause 
was simply the carrier's worn-out power plant. But how could this be? During her 30-year career, Kuznetsov has only spent 450 days at sea in total. That's nowhere near enough time to wear out a carrier's power plant. There are reports emerging that four of her eight KVG-4 boilers need to be replaced during midlife refit as they are worn out. You see, the Soviet Union only bothered to create these gigantic machines and not their permanent bases. Instead of getting shore-based electricity and hot water when Kuznetsov was docked, her boilers were thrashed prematurely, wearing out the power plants. As she sat quietly for most of her life on the pier side, the useful life of her machinery was spent providing electricity and water to the crew on board. In contrast, when Nimitz-class carriers are docked in their permanent ports, full shore services are provided to supply electricity, water, and so on. The nuclear reactors would then be shut down. If services are not available, the reactor that has used up the most fuel will be shut down, while the other one provides power to the ship. But the wearing out of the propulsion system and other machinery is not the only issue. Pretty much everything else on the carrier also has a tough time holding up due to her age, particularly the arresting gear. In 2016, during the deployment in Syria, Two combat aircraft crashed when attempting to land. An Su-33 broke the arresting cable and rolled off the deck. The pilot ejected and survived. A few days later, three aircraft took off, but only two were able to land on the ship. That's because two of the carrier's four arresting wires snapped during the second landing. The pilot of the third airplane was ordered to circle the carrier and wait until the crew fixed the arresting gear. One hour later, the MiG-29K ran out of fuel and the pilot had to eject. In 2017, the carrier returned back to Murmansk to undergo midlife refit, which would extend her service life by another 25 years. As part of the refit, the Russian flagship had to spend some time in dry dock, and the only available one in northern Russia was the PD-50 floating dry dock. But on October 30th, 2018, the floating dock lost its supply of electricity from shore. As the pumps stopped pumping out water out of the ballast tanks, the dock slowly leaned and sank. As a result, one of the two 70-ton cranes ended up falling on the carrier, leaving a 13 by 15 foot hole in the flight deck. The sinking of PD-50 could have been prevented if only the floating dock had emergency generators, which it did. But how good is a generator that has no diesel in the fuel tank? It later turned out that no diesel fuel had ever been purchased for these generators, which is not surprising at all, because the general director of the shipyard that was contracted to repair Kuznetsov was later arrested and charged for stealing $650,000 from the money that was allocated to the repair work. After the sinking of the PD-50 floating dock, it was announced that two adjacent 650-foot-long dry docks in Murmansk shipyard would be combined into one massive 1,300-foot dock. 30 years after commissioning, Russia is finally putting proper support in place for its one and only aircraft carrier. In a way, the past misfortunes of Admiral Kuznetsov can be attributed to the Russian government's failure to invest in proper infrastructure. Because not having an aircraft carrier is not an option for Russia. But the real question is, once Kuznetsov completes her midlife refit and comes out of the dry dock, would the mighty tugboat still be there for her or not? <laughs>